Travis Wingood's home. So uh, Elder Oaks gave the BYU devotional on yesterday, Tuesday, and uh, I, obviously I need to pay attention because he's next in line to be the president of the church. So I've got to look for videos, to take out clips, to use against him when he takes over, like I've done for Nelson. And it's not manipulating of any quotes. No, Nelson's been perfect at supplying his own quotes to be used by me. So I fully expect Oaks to do the similar type of thing and in his own special way. So what you have is uh, him talking about Kimball's talk uh, way back in the day about second generation of BYU. What kind of BYU are they supposed to be? And he's reiterating that for today's BYU. <coughs> I went to Riggs College. It no longer exists. And uh, it was President Benyon who was the president of our college during my tenure, and then followed by Bet, uh, Bednar. I didn't know Bednar, I was long graduated. And uh, <coughs> as much as I uh, was able to learn from the teachers the information about the church as they interpreted it from the manuals I, I uh, went to the University of Lethbridge in Alberta Canada afterwards having met a half Canadian half American there at Ricks and uh, rejecting Leanne Murdoch so I settled with Stephanie, <clears throat> but I can't regret it. This, my life is a result of that. Uh, even though this life is a result of that, what I've learned, I don't regret. Uh, kids, I've got to accept that they're dead and gone. But uh, that's just the sad part of it. But I don't regret learning that Joseph Smith is a translator because of that choice. That's what happened as a result. <coughs> but uh, Rick's College did not give me the foundation to decipher Paleo Hebrew, to learn that Joseph Smith is a translator. That was the University of Lethbridge. And that's the difference. Or shall we quote Oaks, the uniqueness of a church education they withhold knowledge and truth withholding the sciences from us because they just tell the stories as interpreted by the church from the Bible and from the Mormon scriptures they do not study them they do not do research on them if they did, they get into the original language. They teach Biblical Hebrew. They teach Greek. They teach uh, Latin for the Latin Vulgate, so we can learn that Lucifer came from that one, and that's why it's in the Book of Mormon, etc. Or even learn Egyptian. You know, we still have an unfinished translated papyra, as well as three facsimiles. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, I, because of the difference of a worldly education in the sciences, I was able to finish the translations of Joseph Smith. Uh, not just for Hebrew, claiming in the King Fuller Discourse that the biblical Hebrew text was an incorrect translation. I've gone on to finish that, but also the papyra. Book of Abraham, the three facsimiles, not finished translating.
I've done that. Very easy breezy cover girl once you know how to translate as did the biblical authors same manner that's how Joseph Smith did it <coughs> and, uh, and so it concerns me that Oaks is saying he doesn't want the world's ideologies at BYU because I've already seen that they don't have them they don't teach you the scientific process he even says we want a gospel methodology instead of the scientific methodology that's what he's referring to because there is no other methodology in the world school systems so the only methodology he's talking about is science and his reference to gospel is a twisted manipulation of interpretation because all through all of scripture it's science based agronomy is the number one metaphoric usage to explain that the gospel is science based in its methodology we will liken the word unto a seed And so he's purposely deceiving you, purposely deceiving BYU graduates who are going to take that and go, yeah, the spirit will teach me, not science. And he's going to be raising a whole generation of graduates that are going to be anti-science, anti-truth, anti-reality, that are going to go out with their spiritual witness and getting disappointed when their bosses say you're fired <laughs> you didn't accomplish what you needed to do and you lost the business money because of your spiritual witness you're fired get the hell out of here and if it's in Mormonville get the double L double hockey stick whatever it is he double hockey sticks out of here <coughs> And, uh, and then these Mormons won't understand it. Case in point, I've told you about my brother. My brother had a vision problem that was not detected when he was young. As such, he cannot see three-dimensionally. And so when a ball is being thrown at him, he can't see it to know where it is to catch it. It's the same distance other than getting bigger. Yeah, I, I don't know it's weird but uh, as a result he spent his time studying books reading the dictionary learning the definitions of words going through our encyclopedia set that we got back in the 80s and 70s and 80s there was this advertising that you can get a whole encyclopedia set my parents fell for that and got it which is great but uh, <clears throat> and so he focused on school I uh, bookworm uh, nerd or geek whichever one is applicable for a studious person and uh, went through all the AP classes made sure to get all straight A's was valedictorian for our Norco high school and uh, I, the love and joy of all the teachers <clears throat> and so then he goes to BYU and uh, they corrupt him because uh, he uh, was told by my mom that Olivia Newton-John may she rest in peace uh, her song let's get physical physical I guess is just the title was speaking of sex not exercise and uh, and so my brother then associated sex with evil and refused to listen to any of the worldly music and went so far into his extremist views because of my mom to only play on the piano 
because my mom made sure we were taught piano. <coughs> the church hymns. You, know, you got the church on one side saying, listen to good music. And when you're thinking about sin, you know, sing a hymn. And so he got that extremist view as a result. And so at BYU, they corrupted him. Oh, now the rebel, riotous, motley crewist of them all, Mozart, is now okay and acceptable. Along with Beethoven and Chopin and Tchaikovsky and other classics. <coughs> and so he was starting to let the world's views creep in. Well, he was originally one going back and forth between a major. Uh, it was animal husbandry or whatever it was he was doing. But then he finally decided to get into sociology. I, I don't know why, because that requires some science-based knowledge, even though it's more statistical stuff. It shouldn't be polls. 30% of people feel better when they're talking about uh, such and such. <clears throat> no, it's supposed to be stats. You know, this number of this age group uh, with such and such big in stats is for sociology. <coughs> And I know because I got involved in sociology of religion in the worldly school. <laughs> so maybe he didn't get that from BYU. Because I definitely am smarter than him in sociology, even though he went on to the University of Michigan and needed to pull the religion card so that he can get his PhD and his thesis passed. He did his thesis paper on Ephraim and uh, he went and stayed there, lived among them and biased his report because he's Mormon as well. He didn't pay attention to any of the, well, BYU apparently didn't teach him. That's the whole problem. And the University of Michigan recognized that that uh, if BYU had taught him to get a master's, he didn't learn anything. But that's not my brother. He always gets A's. And so uh, it was more of a matter of BYU didn't teach him correctly in sociology. And the University of Michigan called him out on it and called out BYU on it in the same process. So my brother never having failed anything in his life, never been rejected on a thesis paper, or let alone a PhD, went crying to his mommy. May she rot in hell. <clears throat> Why couldn't Olivia Newton-John be my mommy? <laughs> it would have been such a different life. Life of Xanadu. <laughs> and so my mom's dead by the way <clears throat> so she is rotting, rotting in hell for what she did to me nonetheless uh, she then said pull the religion card that they're discriminating him against his religious views they had to cave they didn't want the scandal of a discrimination lawsuit denying him of his thesis and his PhD, all because... Yeah. Well, so as I warned you, yeah, he could only get a job teaching at BYU, and that really didn't work out well. The ones who gave him the education rejected him and so the majority of his job is working for the church 
in the lost membership records department the lost members department now he abused that position to find me I don't know what the hell he was doing knocking on my door if you remember that video <coughs> way back in the day for those of you who've been with me that long but uh, yeah he was abusing his job uh, going beyond the scope of his responsibilities he's supposed to be looking for lost members not tracking them down to give mommy the address <sighs> anyway I never answered the door so yeah that's that's what Mormons who graduate well, from the owner of BYU. The green, Nissan truck, no, from, we have come to move your vehicle again. The owner or of any the other church school. Because as Oaks clearly defined, we don't want the worldly ideologies taught at our schools. And. Uh, talking about quality of teaching we've seen in the news what that means it means temple worthy those who will read from the manuals that are unacceptable as legitimate science by the worldly universities and uh, yeah it's horrifying I mean, literally, working here in Utah, working for Mormons, working among Mormons, they have no inspiration. They do not listen to a spiritual witness, though they claim to. Because the methods that are utilized in the workplaces here in Utah are so bass backwards. Gotta make sure I say that right. <laughs> Like I told you, I worked for Beehive Clothing. They transferred me from the 17th and 17th uh, Distribution Center Warehouse and uh, because they were in need of help. They had a crew of seven people and we were working full-time, 40-hour days, five days a week, and we had to work Saturdays because of the overtime. And so they needed me to go over there and help to try to get things caught up. And uh, uh, I was told, we've tried all different ways, all different methodologies to make this simpler and easier for us. And this is the best that we can come up with. So don't even try. Many have tried. We're going to reject you anyway. So the one main guy uh, got a better job elsewhere. Good for him and his family. And the manager uh, was transferred out and a new one put in. <coughs> new manager said, sure, why not? We'll try your idea. Why not? And uh, as I simply have to say, two people, four hours, done. That's it. That's all. And that's exactly what the church was wanting. Because they wanted to transfer as much from Beehive over to the distribution center. Because they were expanding the distribution center, putting in the larger cranes, and they wanted to move the Beehive stuff over there. To warehouse it in the distribution center. So everything's getting shipped out together. Samuel Wilson. Sam Wilson. Front desk and ask for Kathy. Sam Wilson. Thank you. And so, yes, I was a miracle. I was exactly what they were looking for, and they rejected me. And until people who didn't know any better let me do it, it was done. But that's the difference between a worldly education based in science versus a BYU education a church education because all of them had gone to uh, 
a church school at some point in their life, at some level of their life. <coughs> and none of them could improve their conditions because the church won't teach it to us. And so that, that's the sad reality. And so as much as you think that you're graduated with a degree from BYU and the reports say that Mormons are the most educated of, of populace, that doesn't explain quality. Quality lacks in the education. And so you may have high degrees, but you ain't not you ain't got game. Sorry, sucks to be you. You chose to stay in the church and not do your research scientifically to find out Joseph Smith was a translator and that the real church history indicates that this church is the great and abominable church. Faults on you.